Welcome to The Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thanks for joining us on this broadcast. And I, I've got to admit right away that yesterday's teaching, while powerful, could have been a bit difficult for some of us. It is our nature. It's in our nature to slack whenever possible, to develop a loser's limp when we don't like what we're being asked to do, or maybe just not getting out of it what we desire. And after all, we've already figured out the flesh can't save us. And when Christ comes in, there's a battle going on, right? This is the nature of the battle between our flesh and Holy Spirit now in the life of every true believer. Just because you receive Christ doesn't mean the flesh is gone. If it, if it were, there would be no more temptations or possibility even of sin. But we also have the grace and the strength to resist that in discipline and walk away from it. In the natural realm, when that happens and we fall or stumble, we either get back up and battle through to improvement or success. However, in the spiritual realm, we simply must abide and endure when those things are happening to us that we don't like or care for. That's why it's called discipline and discipleship. Not only are we to not slack off, but endure and never give up. The beauty of it and the redemption and the gift of Christ is that he's done what we could never do and freely given us all that we need. But we still must remain in him in every part of our lives. And the question is, how are you doing when it comes to abiding or enduring in Christ? If you missed yesterday's or any others, as I say every day, you can go to loveandlordship.com, loveandlordship.com, and you'll find yesterday's, many others of these uh, episodes, and a variety of other podcasts and videos and articles. If you're on the website there at loveandlordship.com, we have a watch tab, a read tab, a listen tab. And you'll find those. Thanks for those who have followed us and downloaded them, who are sharing them with others to help them in their walk with the Lord. And we sure appreciate that. Also, thanks for those who contact me and let us know how it's going and questions and comments and disagreements. You can do that at love and lordship, A-N-D, again in the middle, love, A-N-D, lordship, at gmail.com. Now, I'm going to do something in today's program that I've only done a couple of times so far in this year's and are walking through these devotionals by Oswald Chambers entitled, for the most part, My Utmost for His Highest, a few of them from Still Higher for His Highest. I'm going to combine a couple of days because they have the same title and obviously build on one another. The focus is us being diligent in our asking, seeking, and knocking to find out more about Christ and what he desires for our life, not asking, seeking, knocking, knocking, and saying, give me what I want. It's not just getting what we want. He's way too wise and loving for that, you see. Now, with that said, and with little commentary, more commentary from yours truly throughout this one, here's today's message. It's entitled, The Next Best Thing to Do. Again, I said there's two. If you're following along, we're in June 9th and 10th in the devotional booklet or at myutmost.org. That's June 9th and 10th. And he, and he prefaces it by this, and you'll actually see this in some of the titles, depending on what you're reading. Ask if you've not received. And then he uses a Luke 11, Luke 11, 10, for everyone who asks, receives. There is nothing more difficult to ask. Chambers starts with that. We desire and crave and suffer, but only when we've reached our absolute limit do we truly ask. What finally makes us ask God for the Holy Spirit is a sense of unreality. We sense that we are not spiritually real and that we cannot become spiritually real on our own, and that's true. When this happens, when we glimpse our own powerlessness, we must ask God for the Spirit, basing our request on the words of Jesus. How much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Found in Luke eleven thirteen. This is what God is really after with us and what He so greatly desires to give us and that we have in Christ, the Holy Spirit. Why? Because, Chambers says, the Holy Spirit is the one who makes real in us all that Jesus did on our behalf. For everyone who asks, receives. This doesn't mean that if we don't ask, we'll get nothing. Remember, it says God causes his son to, shot, to rise on the evil and the good alike. Matthew 5, 45. But until we ask, 
we won't receive from God directly. To receive from God directly means that we have come into a specific relationship with Him. We have become His children. Check out John 1.12. To all who believed, He became powers to become the children of God. And now, in that position, in that relationship, and now we perceive with moral appreciation and spiritual understanding that all things come from Him. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God. That's from James 1.5. If you realize you lack wisdom, it is because you've come into contact with, talking again about that spiritual reality, and your eyes have been opened. Isn't that what his word tells us he's doing when we are saved and redeemed, giving us a new spiritual life and reality? Don't put on the blinders of reasonableness again. What's reasonable is found in? the old person's way of reasoning and the old ways of the flesh, but notice that it's not, that it is an option. It's your choice. Don't. You can put those on again, but don't. Don't listen when people say, be reasonable. Preach the simple gospel. Don't tell us we have to be holy because that makes us feel abjectly poor. And to that I say, amen, and something we all too readily avoid in most of today's churches and teachings. Chambers says, if we are abjectly poor, we are in the right condition for asking. Ask in the Greek here means beg. We must ask out of poverty. If instead we ask out of greed, what I want, we'll never receive. We must ask because we know that without God, we have nothing. A pauper isn't ashamed to beg. Paupers or poor people, those in poverty, beg because they're poor. There's no other reason. Blessed are the paupers or poor in spirit, Matthew 5, 3. That's the building blocks of a blessed life in Christ, the Beatitudes. Starts right there. Now, as promised, we're going to continue with that same title, the next best thing to do on the very next day, again, June 10th. Like if you're following along, that online title will likely be Seek If You Have Not Found. And then he goes on back to verse 9 in Luke 11, Seek and you will find. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. That's James, the half-brother of Jesus in James 4.3. When you ask, you don't get it because you're asking with greedy, selfish motives. We can candy coat that all we want, but that's one of the major reasons. What motivates you when you ask? We must, with brutal honesty, answer that question. If you are asking to receive things from life rather than from God, you are motivated by a desire for self-realization. Watch out if this is the case, Chambers says. The more you realize yourself, the less you will seek, and let me add, realize or know God. And that's the ultimate purpose of our salvation, to be in that relationship where we can know God as he knows us and we can grow in that the rest of our lives. Chambers continues, seek and you will find. Have you ever sought God with your whole heart? Go back to Jeremiah 29, 13. You'll find him if you seek for him that way. Or do you merely give a half-hearted cry in his direction in moments of doubt or despair, anxiety, fear, and selfish desires? Get to work. Narrow your interest until they are centered on God. Hey, we're right back to priorities and lordship, right? Seek, concentrate, and you will find. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah said it like this. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. Isaiah 55, 1. Are you thirsty? Or are you so satisfied with your own experience that you want nothing more from God? I'm saying this, I promise you, that's going to run out. And when you come to that reality, turn and look, ask and seek and knock for Him. Experience is a gateway, not a destination. Beware of building your faith on experience. We've talked about that many times. If you do, you run the risk of becoming so smug that you wind up driving others away from God. You can never give other people what you've found, but you can make them homesick for what you've got. And then he says, knock and the door will be open to you. Luke 9 and Matthew 7, 7. The door is closed. Your heart is pounding. Wash your hands, you sinners. James again, knock a little bit louder. 
You notice that you are dirty. Purify your hearts. This is even more personal. You are filled with sincerity now. Grieve, mourn, and wail. Have you ever gone before God full of grief about the state of your own inner life? Have you gone without an ounce of self-pity remaining inside you? Only a heartbreaking amazement that you are what you are. Well, humble yourselves. James 4, 8 through 10. Powerful passage there. It is deeply humbling to knock at God's door. You knock with the crucified thief. And Matthew 7, 8 says, To the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Let's close it out with our food for thought today. Are you asking, seeking, and knocking out of your abject spiritual poverty as a spiritual pauper? In other words, knowing that you're totally spiritually bankrupt and lost apart from Jesus Christ, is that what you're asking from? What have you got to lose if you do the next best thing? Ask, then seek, then knock, and keep at it until he's given you not what you think you need, but what he alone in his great wisdom and love knows that you need. Love in action. Regular listeners know these first two. Number one, spend time with God and His Word, prayer, and listening every day. Start with scriptures you heard in this message or start with the Gospel of John or Psalms. Number two, ask Holy Spirit to teach you. Three, write down the things you're asking, seeking after, and knocking on the door for. Now, are they in line with God's Word and will or just your selfish desire even if you've wrapped them in some scripture? Number four, what do you need to change to come to him and ask, seek, and knock as a poor beggar, knowing that he knows best and will provide what's best for you? Ultimately, the Holy Spirit, but you only find that in Christ, right? When you come to him, when Christ in salvation, begin today in humility to look for all things from him. Tomorrow, as on every Wednesday, we'll be joined by my Wednesdays for Women co-host, Adia Wushner. Join us for another great show with the Dia and invite family, friends, loved ones, and enemies to hear. She always has great insights and, and wisdom to share. Again, you can find out a lot more at loveandlordship.com, loveandlordship.com. There's our book there, an icon in the center of the homepage. There's the read, listen, and watch tabs for articles, uh, podcasts, and videos that you can listen to or read or share, uh, watch if you want to, and then share it with others. If you got any comments, please let me know. Love and lordship at gmail.com. Love and lordship at gmail.com. Again, if the Lord is prompting you that this is a kingdom ministry and He may want you involved, you can give there at the upper, near the upper right, is a give tab. And you can give one time or ongoing. It's pretty quick, it takes a minute or so. And we certainly thank you, greatly appreciate that. And all donations are fully tax deductible. So thank you for that in advance. And I'll say as always, if it's not us, then keep praying until the Lord shows you and be faithful to give where he's leading you. Uh, yesterday I talked about a cash app. Today, if you want to give another way, you can give through mail, love and lordship, love and lordship. Send it there. Make the check out to that. Send it to 324 Timothy Drive, T-I-M-O-T-H-Y, 324 Timothy Drive, Nicholasville, Kentucky, 40356. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day in the love and lordship of Christ. And now stay tuned for uh, Greg Horn at 1245 and Hope is Here. I'm Greg Williams and you're listening to The Authority of Love.